time, death, loss. Striking deliberately at his own anxiety, Tim Cantor frequently renders indications of personal fears within his paintings. He captures a boundless anxiety that burns in the sights of temptation and in the heartbreaking thoughts of disappointment, of failure, of weakness, of making choices that might wound the ones we adore. These are the fears that both torment and strengthen our worthy bones. They make us human. They prove our love. As Tim Cantor's fears are linked to his affinities, it would be likely to find examples of this topic within nearly every one of his works. He ties his fears to ambition, to knowledge, and above all, he ties his fears to love. If he had no cares, no love, he'd have no fear. Even in his earliest oil painting of a dark sea, painted when he was just five years old, one could view its daunting tenor as an execution of his basic childhood anxieties. One could speculate that a dying tree Tim Cantor painted at age 11 might portray an emerging awareness of time and death. But it is within his later paintings that we see a change of understanding profound change, a grasp on awareness that burgeoned with adulthood, fear. It grows imposingly. Distinct appearances of this stirring infusion began to emerge within so many of Tim Cantor's matured paintings. Paintings like The Instrumentalist, an elegant work portraying the unmistakable likeness of Amy. She plays the main subject in Tim Cantor's imagined tale of a scene through time. The instrumentalist is, at its heart, a semblance of hope. Hope that no matter the sway of events that might end life before its time, be it struggle, illness, or even war, we carry out our destiny and follow our true love, even if it need be within that of another existence. Though it is a ballad-driven, illusionary story, the instrumentalist is undeniably spurred by the fear of loss, the fear of finality, fear that rises from the intense love that the artist senses for his bride. To care is to fear. These emotions feed off each other grow with one another and gain strength simultaneously. Every man's struggle is an effect of this course and another restless Tim Cantor composition that yields this discerning complexity. This small painting that barely measures the width of one's hand reigns intensely for its modest size. Elderly, fierce and focused, the disquieted subject epitomizes the very root of tension. His hand clenches tight. Scribed on the backdrop, below a shattered pane, reads a notable quote from Thomas Hobbes' Bellum Omnium Contra Omnes, which translates loosely as every man's war against every man. This phrase inspires a fearful notion that human nature rests on a delicate balance. The slightest slip may set in motion the worst of occurrences. Tim interpreted this as an internal battle. For in his painting, every man is indeed one man. The choice to live in anger or to live at peace, 
is that one's own to make. Negativity, pain, hatred, and havoc will always surround us. Do you let its fingers grab hold? Do you let it scratch and sink into your skin? Or do you fight it? Intentional or not, these weighty questions have weaved in and out of the artist's works all through his adulthood. Straightforward, complex, or something in between, his unrelenting enthusiasm commands his work to have meaning and purpose. The examples are wide-ranging, and as we bend the branch of anxiety within the artist's eloquent paintings, there is one that cannot be overlooked. Created when Tim Cantor turned 39 years of age and aptly titled Temptation, the image is the artist's unabridged means of encompassing every anxiety, every weakness, and every luring urge into a single told semblance. Fear in its boundless ways, Tim has painted temptation itself as a single simplistic object. A bottle. Creased on this bottle is the rudimentary contour of a question mark. This bottle, it holds any and all desires. This bottle, a demon of need, a vessel of truth, a test of will. To open it, or just glance inside, would be a surrender to its lure. Here lies its roving link to fear, consequence. Consequence is the lifeblood of all our fears, and it lives in the suspense of a gazing character that Tim Cantor has, by design, rendered androgynous. This could be you, this could be me, this could be whomsoever one might see as they sense this painting's unlimited scope of speculation. One figure, one bottle, a thousand and one questions, a thousand and one. One more question remains as we cross the craving dyed face of this quizzical painting. Who belongs the hand that serves up this temptation? Could this be the hand of our own searching self? Perhaps it's the hand of one we love or loved in the past, or lost, or seen in the streets and never forgot. Could this be the ghost of regret, of remorse, of one who died, of words unsaid? Could it be God? Never has there been a painting so simple in its subject, yet so plump full of quandary. Knowing its nature, there is not a soul in the world who could not relate. He cites anger, religion, lust, jealousy, greed, narcissism, violence, and all that may relate to the snare of desire. Yet he precedes every one of those relentless inclinations by marking that temptation is far too testing to define. Inside that bottle is different for you than me. Nevertheless, he does leave us a solution, or in part, his own personal reparation to fight the leery hand of temptation. He merely asks himself one question, one honest question. Will it hurt the ones he loved?